Good morning and welcome to Church on the Couch. Today's Church on the Couch is just a little bit different. I'm thinking the couch is just a little more crowded because we do not have any in-person service today at Pentonville United Methodist Church. We did have someone who tested positive with COVID. All of the folks that sat near this person have been contacted and there have been no additional cases. But we did decide today out of an abundance of caution just to uh, not have service in person. And we will meet again on October 31st at 11 o'clock. So if you do come to the in-person service or are ready to return to the in-person service, we will see you then. But welcome to Church on the Couch this morning, October 24th, 2021. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we've come to this place from a world of demands and schedules. We've sought hope and peace and have found them here. Now we seek the inner joy that only your presence can bring to our lives. Open our hearts and our spirits to your love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 106, the first five verses. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation enjoying your inheritance and giving praise. Friends, this morning we have so much to be grateful for as uh, we continue into the season of fall and we enjoy the fall colors, the autumn scents, the wonderful recipes, and of course the bountiful harvest. We also have uh, prayer concerns in our hearts, and I invite you to join your heart with mine and bring those joys and concerns to God this morning in our morning prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God, help us to focus on those things that work rather than uh, focus so much on the things that don't. To celebrate the joys rather than focus so much on the disappointments. And while there are things that are certainly upsetting in our daily schedules and the continuing um, struggles of COVID uh, add stress to our day, Help us to continue to see the blessings that are in our midst. Help us to uh, live into those blessings and to um, spread those and share those blessings with others. Lord God, you know the concerns of our hearts. You know the losses. 
that we have endured. Our hearts are heavy for a recent loss at the Pentecostal Church and for all those who continue to struggle. And we pray blessing upon blessing on that family and on all of the families that walk in grief this day. May they know your peace and may they be comforted by your love. Lord God, continue to be with each one of us as uh, we move through our daily lives. And may we continue to look beyond our own needs and see the needs of our brothers and sisters. And may we continue to be the light of Christ in the darkest places in this world. Lord God, we bring all of these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Hear this word. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Fall fresh on each one of us gathered here, so that both speaker and hearer will know your will for us today. Amen. I must tell you that lately, I feel a lot like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, you don't have to worry. I am not going to become a serial killer. But I am a joy killer. It seems like no matter what is going on, I can only hold on to joy for so long until I then get transformed into this tired, frustrated, crabby self. Every day is like an episode of Dr. Joy Killer and Mr. Hodge. One day I'm singing, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. And before you know it, I'm grumbling, rejoice in the Lord, back off. Some days I don't want to rejoice. Especially since COVID, I found joy short-lived. It seems just as I begin to rejoice about something, some roadblock crops up. And I find myself grumbling about a new COVID-related policy or worrying about how we will do worship this way or that way, or how many people will fit in this particular space, and on and on. And soon all the joy seems to have disappeared. It's been a long 19 months since the onset of the pandemic. Things are bad even if you don't have that extra setback or disappointment or tragedy in this time. The isolation, the disruptions, the inconveniences, the losses. Now let's be clear. Joy doesn't mean happy or instant gratification. And to not be joyful does not mean sad or, or mad. Joy is foundational. It's an undercurrent that flows through everything that, and it lifts us to a different level, to a new level. And it, it puts everything into the sharper perspective. There's a lot to be happy about, and certainly there's a lot to be thankful for. But I realized as I was returning from a four-day vacation 
that my joy pot pipeline is clogged a little and I'm becoming increasingly susceptible to the changing moods of Dr. Joy Killer. So I read this passage from Philippians and thought about how words of rejoicing don't pass my lips the way they used to. And I'm not so quick to celebrate the joys as I am the concerns. I also find myself getting anxious a lot. I want the COVID numbers to go down. I want everybody to come back to church and, and, and some new people to come too. I want things to be more normal than they are right now. So as I read, I paused at that verse. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Then I repeated it and wondered aloud how I could turn around that by just taking whatever concern I had, whatever anxiety I felt, and offer it up to God. When Paul wrote this to the Philippians, these were much needed words during a time of occupation and distress, a time of great anxiety and worry for the people. And they're words that we need to hear in the middle of our real life challenges. And of course, Paul didn't stop there. The one who had called us to rejoice and let our gentleness be evident, not to be anxious, at, and in all things pray with thanksgiving, also told us that whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Striking a blow at Dr. Joy Killer, pulling me out of my despair, causing me to test my words and to elevate my game, to think about not what's going wrong, but what's going right. And then, after these words of encouragement or challenge, however you read and hear it, Paul says, put it into practice. You may hear these words from Paul as encouraging or inspiring, or maybe you hear them as challenging or unrealistic. The Philippians may have had a similar reaction, but they also better understood the context. These words weren't the lofty words of some tireless optimist. These were the faithful words of a man who was writing from his prison cell and who knew the perils of following Jesus, of having experienced multiple beatings and arrests for his faith. So when he says rejoice, it's not that he's out of touch with reality. It's that he understands that whatever he faces, whether it be challenge or opportunity, the only way to face it is for him to get out of the way and put God at the center. And then when God's at the center of his life, that's where he finds joy. Not from external events, but from internal events. And then by changing the focus of his life, he can't but help, help but change his life. Paul doesn't focus on the misery of the difficulties he's having. Instead, he focuses with thanksgiving on not what his enemies are doing, but what, I'm, what God is doing. He isn't consumed with his own responses and reactions to life's occurrences. He is consumed by God's love. He's focusing on the best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. And it's there that he finds God's wholeness. And when I become Dr. Joy Killer, I lose focus of that. Corey Ten Boom was a Holocaust survivor. And her sister and parents died there. But Corey was released after her sister's death because of a clerical error. And when the Nazis invaded the Netherlands, her family had devised a way to hide Jews during the Holocaust. In her best-selling book, The Hiding Place, she tells of this experience. 
but she doesn't focus on the misery of the experience, but instead the joy, not of surviving, but the joy of living. The joy that caused her to seek to save so many lives, the joy that drove her to tell her family's story and the story of her faith. Corey and her sister Betsy were imprisoned together, and they would offer these secret worship services and studies of the Bible from Bibles that they snuck into the camp. And Corey, who has inspired so many with her story, was moved by her sister's deep faith. When their barracks were infested with fleas to a point beyond distraction, Betsy instead was grateful for them. I thank God even for the fleas, Betsy would say, because she believed that because of those horrible conditions caused by the fleas, even the guards stayed away, making it possible for the women to conduct their secret Bible study even more openly. In just days before Betsy was put to death, she told her sister, there's no pit so deep that he is not deeper still. They will listen to us, Corey because we had been there. The horrors that Corey saw and the devastation of losing her entire family could have driven her away from her faith, but it didn't. Instead, it deepened it. Living with joy doesn't certainly doesn't mean that we're perfect or that life is perfect. It doesn't even mean that life's without struggle. But it does mean that we keep our eye on God and God's vision for our lives and for the world, focusing on that which is true and pure and lovely doesn't make us perfect, but it does set our sights on the one who is. If we're able to refocus, then we're able to reframe. And we are able to place our focus on God's love and begin to see a different world today than we saw yesterday. When we move ourselves out of the center, we place God where our needs are, where our worries are, where our frustrations and our grievances are. It doesn't completely remove those things from our life, but by placing God at the center, we have a new lens by which to see those problems and to see our lives and to see our needs. And a new lens through which to see each other and one another's problems and needs. By changing the focus, rejoicing in God's goodness and presence in our midst becomes our default position. And thinking on things that are praiseworthy and right and noble and pure becomes a more natural response to God's limitless love. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, no more Dr. Joyce Joy Killer. Rejoice. Amen. Please join me for this prayer of confession. It's getting more and more difficult, Lord, for us to keep our attention on the holy things. We want to always focus on what is true and honorable, just and pure, but it gets complicated. Sometimes we turn a deaf ear because we feel we just can't meet all the needs that are presented to us. Heal our hearts and spirits, Lord. Help us to understand that you do not ask us to heal everything, but rather to find a simple way in which we might lighten someone else's burden, as you have lightened ours. You have brought hope and peace to us. Now cause us to rejoice in the wondrous things that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And receive these words of assurance. We are forgiven. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Thank you for joining us on the couch this morning. For those who worship in person, we'll see you on October 31st at 11 o'clock. And for all of you who regularly attend Church on the Couch, we'll see you again with the full worship team next week. Have a blessed week. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Go in peace.
Amen.